Can you hear us, Yamani? Um, okay, طيب السلام عليكم جميعا ويعني um, يعني it gives me really great pleasure يعني to introduce uh, Amani Amani Hassan again. Amani is uh, providing us today with her second talk, part two of neurodevelopmental disorder. زي ما انتم عارفين دكتور Amani هي chair حق Child and Adolescent Psychiatrist في Royal College of Psychiatry هنا في Cardiff في UK. Consultant psychiatrist with يعني uh, uh, many years of experience in both child and adolescent psychiatry and learning disability. Uh, last time I made the introduction on the learning disability, um, general guidance, and then the plan was to talk to you about a bit more detail about ADHD, ASD, and Tourette. The thing I learned from Dr. Amani is that it's quite a lengthy talk. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided to divide it into two talks. So we decided وfollowed up by part three and we'll be next Saturday inshallah in the same time to complete the topic so I think it's best that Amani will give her the opportunity to to do the presentation and then we leave questions towards the end so we don't do interruptions so we make sure that we get the maximum out of the talk unless you have a very pressing please raise your hand but I think Amani Factors in how coffee time at the end, I shall you can question answer session. Uh, over to you, Amani. I think you're muted, Amani. I don't know what I'm going to Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I don't know why. Lemon and nasty kill him, Sam Ali Eko Rahib. How will the read like in Matthew Mushkin Hassan Amas Sam Eko? I believe Lemon and Nas to mute the echo. Min and Dibin Bechtefiana. We started lectures the last time about neurodevelopmental disorders. I started with intellectual disability mainly because I believe it's very important for all of us to understand learning disability very well before we go to other neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, what we what we knew from DSM five and ICD eleven that the neurodevelopmental disorders actually they overlap. So sometimes you can find a pure ADHD, a pure ASD, a pure LD. We leave LD aside, but nowadays there is an overlap. Okay, and one of the things I just want to mention about the overlap is that it's been happening for years, and doctors have been talking about it. Because in the past, it was almost impossible. It was uh, either or. So you cannot have ADHD and ASD. So now the, the overlap was proven genetically before it reached the DSM-5 and ICD-11. But the problem that we discovered with the overlap is that the tools used, and this is very important, the tools used to assess ADHD, ASD in the past were um, design when the overlap was not allowed. This is very important to put at the back of your head. So the tools that we use to assess ADHD or mainly ASD were designed according to the DSM-3 or 4, so they were not allowing the overlap, okay? Uh, today, I am the Dr. Sarr well, Okay, let me see if this will. Muted, Amani, muted. No, we can't hear you. Now? Yes, yes, okay. fine. Thank you, yes. Okay, I will do my best to cover for one hour D. If we fail, I don't mind giving a third lecture, but I don't know when is that going to be, okay? All right, before we go ahead, I just want to make three things very clear. If we understand this, these three concepts, I, I, you're going to understand neurodevelopmental disorder well. Not only that, you're going to understand also your approach to most psychiatric disorders. 
There are three concepts in psychiatry. You need to get it very well in your head to understand. It will help you understand as much as possible the symptoms presented to you. There is something called hierarchy of symptoms. There is something called hierarchy of diagnoses. And there is something called main psychopathology. Okay, what are the importance of this? The hierarchy for, of symptoms for me, it's important to manage risk. What does it mean? Say, for example, I've got somebody who came to me and saying that, oh, doctor, because we know, we know that patients are not able to set or to complain about this, their symptoms in a way that we would like to hear in order to make a diagnosis very easy. For example, somebody might come to me, and maybe most of you are aware of that, but I just need to clarify these three concepts before I go ahead. Somebody might come to you and say, doctor, I don't eat well. Um, I perceive myself as ugly. I am anxious. I don't sleep. I hear voices. According to the hierarchy of symptoms in psychiatry, hearing voices takes a top priority. Why the hierarchy of symptoms here is important? Because hearing voices, him, that person might be hearing of voices asking him to kill someone. So here the hierarchy of symptoms is important to control risk. Okay? Hierarchy of diagnosis. We know the ICD-10 is being put, the, 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 the diagnoses are put in such a hierarchy that it speaks themselves. For example, I believe we start initially with, with, with brain injury or um, like the dementias or the organic, and then we go, go, go down till we go to the ne what we call in the past neurosis or anxiety. or so, so the hierarchy of diagnosis is important because we cannot say, for example, I would not diagnose anxiety disorder when I know there is psychosis at the back of it. Okay, this is one thing. And also the rule in psychiatry, if you've got many disorders being diagnosed, you have to understand there is something wrong because there cannot be a million diagnoses. It can be two. So you need to get the diagnosis right. The third concept is the main psychopathology. And I will give you an example of how do I explain main psychopathology to my students in order for us to understand what I'm going to say after. I give a very simple example. I will say, let us say, for example, that I broke my leg without knowing. So my leg is broken and I have no idea at all that my leg is broken. But what did I notice symptoms wise? That I'm, I'm unable to walk. And if I walk, my leg will be swollen and I will have pain. So an unexperienced doctor will give me painkiller and ask me to rest without doing an x-ray. So I will have the painkiller, I will rest. As soon as I walk, everything will go back to normal. Sorry, we'll go back to square one in terms of, the, I will have symptoms because the psychopathology is there. So the main, it's very important for most of psychiatric disorder, if not all, we've got the main psychopathology. So I give you an example. And, and, and people here could share, answer and help me. Does anyone know what is the main psychopathology in borderline personality disorder? Please feel free to, to shout out here, Jamal. Okay. Uh, okay, let, let's go ahead then. So borderline personality disorder, oh yeah, Syria, okay. So yeah, Syria, we want to go ahead. But Asha, not the shadik, and after somebody has to answer. It's the sense of self and sense about, like, I mean, how the person feels about themselves and about others. This is the main issue. Okay, okay, maybe there are different schools. But okay, I'm just here. I want to explain something. Uh, borderline personality disorder can come with repeated self-harm, which nowadays in the UK is a learned behavior. So repeated self-harm will not put somebody under a uh, borderline. Uh, there is sense of, so there are symptoms. There are, okay, sorry. One of the things I forgot to say, there is main psychopathology versus the symptoms, the core symptoms to make a diagnosis. But the main psychopathology might be a core symptoms or might not. So the main psychopathology in borderline personality disorder is splitting. So as soon as the splitting is well established, you can clearly make a diagnosis of, uh, of, of borderline personality disorder. 
the main psychopathology in ADHD, as we're going to move now, uh, does anyone know what's the main psychopathology in ADHD? Okay, the main psychopathology in ADHD is the inattention, actually. So although, also ADHD, we're going to come to that, there are a cluster of symptoms, and we need to have certain numbers according to the, to the ICD, whatsoever ICD-10 you're using or DSM-5, but the main psychopathology is really inattention. It's not hyperactivity. Okay, so putting putting at the back of your head hierarchy of diagnosis, hierarchy of symptoms, main psychopathology, with leaving from the learning disability, I'm gonna start with Tourette syndrome, because Tourette syndrome is actually one of the one of the trickiest neurodevelopmental disorder. In what sense? The neuro we know all these neurodevelopmental disorders they start in the developmental period. But uh, sometimes Tourette syndrome, because it started at the age of seven most of the time, okay, sometimes I have symptoms that will come. So people with Tourette syndrome, typically they might, they present sometimes with ADHD at an earlier age. And sometimes they present with ASD symptoms. So you'll find a child have good traits of ASD have got traits of ADHD and people jump and diagnose ASD, ADHD. And then at the age of seven, the Tourette's hit you on the face. And the problem with that, and we'll come to it, that the ADHD um, treatment, the stimulant one, can precipitate ticks in somebody who's prone to it, okay? And why we say, why I'm taking Tourette as higher because the Tourette center in the brain is actually higher than your center of ADHD and ASD, if there is a disorder in these centers in the brain. So when there is Tourette, when there is Tourette, and there are traits of AD, ASD and ADHD, I, the diagnosis of ASD and ADHD most of the time is invalid. Okay? Okay, I'm going to speak about Tourette a little bit just for you to understand more about Tourette. So the Tourette has a lot of overlaps. As I said, the ADHD, I will say also ADHD diagnosis, but it might be, it might be uh, symptoms more do not meet the, meet the threshold. And the risk about that, let us say, because sometimes you've got nothing, but you've got the ADHD in front of you. The Tourette hasn't appeared yet. So when when you start somebody on ADHD or you diagnose ADHD or you diagnose ASD or with children, if you diagnose anything, one of the most important thing is to tell the family, listen, this is the diagnosis at this moment in time. Your child is going to grow up and the brain will develop further. So what appears to us as ADHD now might change. Okay, so people will not commit you and say, oh, oh, you do that doctor doesn't know anything. He diagnosed my son with this. And I went to another doctor and he said, how on earth that diagnosis was made? And this is key in children, by the way. That ADHD, ADHD mainly, and let's start with this. Although I'm talking about Tourette syndrome, what you see as ADHD at the beginning might end up being Tourette syndrome, and these are just symptoms. And the importance of this, I don't mind somebody having the two, but when I see the ADH, when I see the Tourette symptoms or the tics emerging, I treat aggressively the Tourette's, and you will be amazed. A, if the child is on a stimulant medication, I stop them, and you will be amazed that the Tourette's, treating Tourette does treat the ADHD symptoms and the ASD symptoms sometimes disappear because they were part of the what we call the complex Tourette syndrome. Can somebody else tell me what do people get confused with or sorry, ADHD symptoms, what appear to be ADHD symptoms might be later developing into something else? The common, one of the commonest uh, problem we face that somebody's been diagnosed with ADHD and then at a later time it's not ADHD. Can somebody shout out? Okay, let me explain to you. So ADHD is impulsivity, hyperactivity, 
and inattention. And as I said, the inattention is the main psychopathology. So according to the DSM, so according to the ICD-10, you need to have um, a nine symptoms in total. Uh, the majority should come from inattention. Uh, three symptoms, I, I believe five symptoms from inattention, five out of nine. Three symptoms out of um, of uh, five from a, a hyperactivity and one impulsivity. The symptoms should be across both settings. So you cannot have a child who's hyperactive, uh, lacking concentration in one setting and focusing and doing well in another setting. This is behavioral problems. This is not ADHD. Okay. And it should cause sometimes disability. And I'll explain to you how people sometimes miss the disability. So this is ADHD. Okay. Siri here. Let oh, me know oh. if I can help. Oh, sorry. I need to get off my. Okay. So, severe ADHD, you will find somebody unable to concentrate completely and jumping up and down. Very hyperactive child. All right. And with impulsivity, the child is so impulsive that that child is involved with what I call the risk taking behavior. Does that look like anything else in psychiatry, in adult even? Bipolar disorder. Bless Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So one of the things also you need to be very careful when you're doing the developmental assessment or history, sorry, for a child with ADHD in order... Okay, so ADHD symptoms will look like bipolar disorder, but not all types of bipolar disorder, with one type only. The rapid cycling bipolar disorder, because it appears, because the mood cycles within the day several times, or, or the, that person is, is maybe on, on this mood 24 seven, but the difference between ADHD and bipolar is the mood element. The mood element might not present at a young age, but, but you need to ask the family, if a child presents with severe symptoms of ADHD at a very young age, one of the important questions you need to ask of a family history of bipolar disorder. And if there is a family history of bipolar disorder, you need to say to the family, listen, at this moment in time, your child is presenting with ADHD symptoms. Okay, his ADHD symptoms is severe, but because there is a family history of bipolar, that might be the prodrome of his bipolar disorder. If you, okay, so what is the difference? If I've got two children in front of me, one presenting with severe ADHD symptoms, the two of them, sorry, one has a family history of bipolar, and that child later on will present as a bipolar, say, at five years' time or six years' time. So the difference between the two is when you give stimulant medication or even non-stimulant, the child who's, who's, who's going to develop bipolar later, his symptoms will get worse because you're giving a stimulant to a, pro pro uh, to a bipolar brain in the future. The other one will get better. So you need to speak to the family and say, listen, we're going to try medication, but if he gets worse, we might be dealing with something else, but we have to wait. And in that case, you need to treat the child. You cannot leave the child without treatment, all right? In these cases, we, we treat with low dose of risperidone because risperidone is one of the drugs that you can use to treat. I personally use risperidone when I'm suspicious that the child I'm assessing, I'm assessing at this point in time is actually gonna develop something else. And sometimes, mainly with British people here, with the difficulty, I will say, listen, I'm going to try a small dose of stimulant. If he gets worse, we need to shift to something else. But sometimes the family need to see that to believe you. All right. All right. I'm just going to clear out this ADHD and bipolar because some people got confused. People think that, so you've got two diagnoses, ADHD and bipolar. Okay. Some people say to you, there are, there are ADHD, there are many ADHD symptoms or, or diagnosis with bipolar, or the rate, sorry, the prevalence of ADHD in bipolar is high, while the opposite is not true. So, so bipolar in ADHD, bipolar, 
in ADHD cases is no more than 1% like the bipolar in the general population. But what you see as an ADHD in a bipolar brain is actually symptoms because the two, the two diagnoses look like each other. And by the way, by the way, somebody did a study. There were many studies, by the way, done on the relationship between the two. Okay? So some people might say to you that actually most of ADHD children will grow up and develop bipolar. This, as I said, this is false because the prevalence of bipolar in ADHD symptoms is low. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thoughts. Let's let's go back to the bipolar. So when you when they say to you, I've got bipolar and, and there is ADHD symptoms, you cannot put a stimulant medication to, bi to a bipolar brain. So just, you have to be very careful with these two diagnoses because uh, people sometimes got confused between the two and a proper assessment will save you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a point, sorry. The point I wanted to mention Somebody did a research on ADHD saying that, yeah, yeah, ADHD definitely will develop later or the most common comorbid diagnosis with ADHD is bipolar. And this is not true. The most common diagnosis with ADHD, does anyone know? Apart from depression and at a younger age? Uh, conduct disorder. The conduct, I will mention something about the conduct, by the way, because conduct disorder is very important to mention when there is ADHD. Okay, we all establish that there are symptoms of ADHD in bipolar, but the opposite is not true. The prevalence of bipolar disorder in ADHD is 1%. But one of the commonest comorbid diagnoses with ADHD as people grow up is actually schizophrenia and proven by research. And this is again another point where you, when you make you want to make sure that when you give a stimulant, you're not actually precipitating the disease earlier. Bipolar is actually common with ASD. Although your brain will say, oh, ADHD is common with bipolar, but actually ADHD is a common psychopathology later on, it will be schizophrenia if there is. And with, with ASD, we have mania, mainly mania. I'm not going to say bipolar, it's mania because with some, you, you got mania separately, okay? So I hope these two areas are clear. And I was lucky enough, they may be gulu, but the name of Rahman, in the first paper that addressed ADHD with bipolar disorder was under my name. And the kulu bifadlallah, and look how my professor, for professor, she raised that question and she said, I could hire a trainee. She said, Amani, I will leave, I will give you a sample and leave you fully to investigate that. So people can Google uh, this paper, it's called The Prevalence of Bipolar Disorder in ADHD Children, and it's called Hassan et al. And this was a cornerstone that after that, many people replicated that study. So this is a study to prove that actually the prevalence of bipolar disorder in ADHD is like the normal population. Okay? If I may, subhanAllah, this is really helpful to know. psychopathology. In one of the features that describing schizophrenia in the olden days was autism. Uh, so I would have thought ASD would have been linked with kids schizophrenia. So this is really um, a learning point as well. So thank you for that clarification. Okay, yeah, uh, it, it was a biggest surprise for us, but uh, I, I, I've been lucky enough because almost one of the leading professors um, of uh, ADHD in the whole world, actually, Na'ilanu, here, mashallah, she's, she's yani, somebody who's great when it comes to child psychiatry. Here, Professor Faber, and you and I worked under her, and she's the one, the Rutter book we know, say Rutter died a year, two years ago, and she's now the main editor of Rutter's book. So it's it's a Faber. So she's the main editor, and you got the other people with her. So she's done the research on both the comorbid diagnosis with ADHD and ASD. She's very interested in neurodevelopmental disorder. I've done three major researches with her. So she 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 made it very clear. She's establishing everything very clear. Okay, um, 
uh, go back to Tourette syndrome. One of the commonest di uh, comorbid diagnoses is o uh, sorry, more co there is high comorbidity with OCD, depression, anxiety, and aggression. Aggression, by the way, in complex Tourette syndrome is 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 a big thing. Actually, is a big thing. All right. So the ticks. Uh, okay. Although I said Tourette syndrome, actually Tourette syndrome. Uh, what we, the neurodevelopmental disorder, motor disorder is one of the neurodevelopmental disorder. And we went here is motor tics. So with Tourette syndrome, you can only diagnose Tourette syndrome if you got two motor tics and one vocal tics. So if you don't have a vocal tics, there is no Tourette syndrome. But if you got just purely motor tics, it's tic disorder. Uh, Tourette syndrome by itself, there are two types. There is simple, what is called simple Tourette. And there is a complex Tourette's. And most of the cases that we see is a complex Tourette's. And complex Tourette's, the complexity is not with the movement, actually. The complex Tourette is they present on top of the Tourette syndrome, severe anxiety, a little bit of ASD, severe ADHD. And you got aggression. The aggression is above and beyond your imagination. And the treatment, I always got excited when I see complex Tourette's because you can see that the child will be on a stimulant medication because of the ADHD and the child is almost on the verge of being expelled from school. And when you put them on a small dose of antipsychotic, it helps significantly. So complex Tourette's syndrome, it's called complex because of the comorbidities with it. And they in, in here, most of the times they present with uh, suicidal ideation and aggression. And the Tourette's is so bad. The, the motor or the vocal tics are so bad. Uh, in the UK, there is a service for adult um, Tourette's syndrome. Um, and for children, some pediatricians do treat. It's a hit and miss in child psychiatry. And there are few people who are specialized in that. And we called from the Royal College of Psychiatrists to establish a service for people with Tourette syndrome, but it's still it's 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 in infancy, in 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 its infancy. Sorry. All right. So stereotyped um, uh, tics, they occur in bouts. It's sudden and can be simple or complex. I've said that and semi voluntary, and um, and as I said, it's uh, it's it's tics are rapid coordinated, um, and and one of the things you need to immediately is to make sure that if there is a comorbid diagnosis of ADHD being diagnosed before the fix, stop it, please. Stop the stimulant and start the child on 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 um, on a small dose of antipsychotic risperidone, aripiprazole. They will all do. All right. Uh, with the, with a the tick, it's pre-monotory. So uh, monotory. So the child will say, "I can feel the ticks are coming." There is some relief after they start ticking, and then they can suppress the ticks. They can suppress the ticks, and um, and then after suppression, you have rebound again. Um, um, people with Tourette syndrome they talk about medication. We know in Tourette syndrome we only medicate for two reasons only. One of them, if there is severe bullying. And the second thing, if the, if the ticks are so bad that the child is able to hold a pen at school, apart from that, we don't we don't treat, or if it's complex. If it's complex, tic, there is aggression and suicide, this is something different. But going back to tick disorder, um, the psychotherapy plays a major role here with happy reversal. But for children, I feel it's, it's a total waste of time. And in the catchment area where I work, I do not allow psychotherapy because I feel I'm wasting the time of the psychologist. Adult, it's very useful. Why is that? Because an adult will come to you and say, listen, I've got like a bad tick of maybe my eye blinks badly or anything, whatsoever ticks he's not happy with. And I want to control that because I've got an interview or a meeting, somebody whom I, I want to propose to or I've got whatsoever. So all these habit reversal, all these, um, uh, all these psychotherapies that is uh, linked to, to, to suppressing a tick or controlling it, you cannot control trillion ticks, it's one tick. So you, you, you do a huge effort. So always when they come as adult to psychotherapy, the adult will ask them which tick you want to get rid of. We will help you get rid of or control it. 
because we know ticks keep changing. So they are not fixed. So that's why I feel personally, it's a waste. It's a waste of the, of the psychology time when 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 I refer a child with Tourette syndrome to 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 have psychotherapy. All right. And uh, for simple ticks, I give just a letter of diagnosis to the school for the school because they need to cater for that child and mainly through psychoeducation, tell all other people in the school that the, uh, or in the classroom that this child has ticks. Because one of the things that you need to learn about ticks is that because children imitate each other, when you got a child who's ticking badly, you need to exclude two things before you make a diagnosis. One of them is that the mother doesn't have uh, Tourette syndrome herself. Although if the, if the mother has got Tourette syndrome, the child might have Tourette syndrome as well, or the child might be mimicking his mother. It's, it's, it's like almost the OCD thing. The other thing as well, because it happened to me personally was I was a senior trainee. I was dealing with a child for three months who was just having motor tics. And, and the mother kept nagging that uh, he's noisy and the school is complaining about him. I never felt tempted to put him on medication. But funny enough, by chance, the child who's sitting next to him came to my clinic with the same symptoms. And then digging further, I realized that the, the child who came after four months to see me was a child who has got actually the Tourette syndrome and the child I saw earlier was just mimicking that child. So children do imitate each other. So you need to make sure that the child is not mimicking somebody else with these ticks and the mother, whether she has tick disorder or not. So, so with children, it's not easy to diagnose, but even if we diagnose, we don't do any treatment unless there is bullying, as I said, or the ticks are so bad. But with complex Tourette syndrome, this is something that needs medication, okay? All right, so simple motor ticks, eye blinking, eye rolling, uh, facial grimacing, nose twitching, lip bouting, and there are many examples. Probably you know people of, 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 of having tick disorder, uh, clearing the throat, cleaning throat. <coughs> This is this is a form of a tick. I'm not talking now. I can do it, but some people cannot stop doing it. All right. And complex motor ticks can go as hopping, jumping, touching object, and stuff like that. All right. So vocal ticks. There are simple vocal ticks, and there are complex motor ticks. So simple motor motor ticks like so what I've done: throat clearing, grunting, barking, whistling, sniffing. Complex motor tics, this is freezing and shouting out and corpolalia and echolalia. And, and, and sometimes t t uh, children got expelled from schools because they said the teacher will say the child is, 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 is nasty or verbally abusive. And, he, and in fact, the child is nothing but having vocal tics. And, and this is something else also sometimes it's very difficult to prove, but it, it, it's just need careful assessment. With children, you need to be very careful because they are developing. All right. Um, how to assess Tourette syndrome? Um, there are rating scales, but on the same time, you might have someone in the clinic because kids are good at suppressing ticks. So the mother might come and say, so the school is complaining about his ticks. I can see his ticks. And then you see, sorry, I am talking about the mother. And then the child will come to you in the clinic with no ticks at all. Do you know how to prove that? If a child got ticks, what to say to the mother? If you are unable to prove if, or, or you're unable to see these ticks. It's to, to ask the mother to, 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 to video record it with you know, if the mother could afford, because, and, 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 and always when I ask about video recording for children, the most important thing for any behavior or anything that you're worried about, the most important thing for me is a child not to be aware that the, his mother is video recording him, because if it is a behavior or problem, that behavior will get worse. So I always say, put the mobile away, put it in a way that you know he doesn't know that you're you're videoing him or recording him and uh, and and just this is this is the way we see the ticks because 
many times. And also it's a good sign. If that child comes to my clinic, which is a new setting and, and, and I cannot see any ticks. So for me, even if there are ticks, there are simple ticks. So it's not, it's or simple to rest syndrome. It's not something for me to worry. All right. Am I going fast or it's okay with you? Um, I think it's reasonable. Any any comments, yeah, Jama'a, in al hudur uh, Yes, it is fine. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead, Yamani. Yeah, Thank you. So um, ICD-10, transient tick disorder, chronic motor or vocal tics, and then combine multiple motor and vocal tics. This will make the Tourette syndrome. All right. Uh, Tourette management, psychoeducation, uh, self-esteem, anger, bullying, support, school-based that mainly, and nowadays in the UK from camps, we've got teams that actually goes to school, uh, go to school and, and help the school with psychoeducation. Sorry, I this is an old presentation. As I said, psycho is being omitted by the Royal College, it's education. We should not say the word psycho at all. All right, school-based, medical when needs be, psychological, as I said, I don't personally uh, find it useful to do psychological treatment um, for tick when, you know, I, I feel it's a waste of time. And then if there is OCD, you treat the OCD. And if there is ADHD, you treat the ADHD, but with antipsychotic, not with stimulant medication. Okay. All right. And these are the, the, the drugs according to its hierarchy where you can use to treat um, Tourette syndrome. Uh, probably between risperidone and aripiprazole, I always, I prefer risperidone. It's my one of my favorite antipsychotic, but when there is obesity, we tend to go to aripiprazole. All right. And uh, the treatment ticks, you cannot eliminate it completely. Uh, you can achieve 25 to 50% reduction in symptoms and, uh, and be aware of natural course of ticks and use rating scales. Uh, but with ticks, uh, um, one of the most important thing, as I said, I treat complex Tourette syndrome. Most of this is just reassurance. Um, and uh, the complex mainly Tourette syndrome, I focus on the aggression and the suicidal uh, suicidality. Really somebody ticking or not ticking is, 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 I don't get excited by that. All right. And, and people who should be acceptable of, 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 of these things. So as I said, it, it's the most important thing is to treat complex. Complex means that the, the comorbidity with that diagnosis. All right. Uh, I, I, this is just me, um, more information. Uh, I would rather go to all right I will go to ADHD all right um, can, uh, I, can I just interrupt a minute just to ask if there's any questions before we progress to ADHD Jamal if you have any please يعني, put your hand up I will have a question in the chat and I can ask that يعني, on your behalf like an idea that like, your interaction is good yeah. Can I can I ask one question, please, before we proceed? Thank you. Tahiyati Amani, Imad al Bidi. A question about uh, is it possible to have the comorbidity between uh, uh, Tourette syndrome and, and uh, autism? Because I, I, I mean, from my experience, I, I have inherited some cases with with uh, dual diagnosis. Yes, definitely. I, I, I've said it earlier. Cases, Katira. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I probably confuse you. You might have ASD and Tourette syndrome, or you might have um, the Finas Kaman, Yani, Fimus Tolak, and right to turn before I doctor them. I'm like, I'm not a tough with that. And as we tell them, I'm tough, the can you show a half of you, you have it to what you have it to what so when when the ASD symptoms are traits or symptoms just and they do not they are not enough, some people can jump and make that diagnosis. But the Tourette syndrome later explain it all. And most of these cases that is weak, you will find that when you treat the Tourette's, 
the patient, the family will say, oh, actually, his symptoms of ASD is getting better, are getting better. To my best of my knowledge, ASD symptoms will only the core symptoms will get better if you're high functioning autism, all right? And you've learned, you've learned to mask it. But apart from that, for me, I just feel sometimes that people have rushed. So the symptoms did not meet enough criteria, but they rushed and cooked the rest of the symptoms. But what I'm dealing with is Tourette's. But yes, you're right. And actually, uh, I've done a research about the overlap between the um, neurodevelopmental disorder and like the presence in a sample of 100 uh, children with ADHD to look at the other uh, comorbid uh, disorder. But it's it's I presented it, it's, it was my thesis for a master. So I, I, I didn't find time to publish that. But I believe there must be loads of people doing it as well. So they overlap. But just to remind me, Dr. Uh, um, uh, Ismail, in uh, tools used to assess ASD mainly in the past did not allow for any overlap. And we are calling now for to, 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 to upgrade or update these assessment tools. But yes, you can have ASD, but pure and you can have comorbid with it, uh, Tourette syndrome. They are all neurodevelopmental disorder. Yes, yeah, Dr. Yasir? Um, Bordo Suara and overlap. Since we can think about a Tourette's between a tics in patients with uh, with potential ASD, yeah, it's going to be a difficult to differentiate between a tics and mannerism and stereotypes that you can see on ASD. And I think the overlap because if you have a that, problematic recognition, and differentiation between those two overlapping presentation, ticks and manners and stereotypes. Hagigi, the kalam hagigi, lakin mainly al concern a raise sarahatan between researchers about al us misdiagnosing or mislabeling certain symptoms for ASD was actually the OCD and mannerism. The 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 confusion begins the mannerism ASD and OCD. Um, the cases دي, it gets more complicated. Our differentiation becomes difficult when a child the IQ of the child is low. When the brain is compromised, the Saying that, I just a few study it amulet and a nasal end of mild learning disability. And whom I'm talking here about an IQ below 70 and 50 up to 50. A few study it amulet in no hell al ana fil mild LD, belgal ADHD symptoms, they are symptoms, she's all my end of mild LD. I'll study it amulet would repeat it by other researchers. فانت زول مايلد ال دي قالوا بتقدر تقلسيت السيمتومز بتاعت الاي دي اتش دي كامله لكن من الاي كيو ده تضرب من ال 50 انت في الحقيقه يعني جود لك اف يو كود استابلش اني ثينج فحيكون كده نحن بنقوم الـ 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 الاطفال زي ديل اللي هم الاي كيو من 50 وانت نازل اللي هم بتقوم بتلقى a little bit of ADHD, a little bit of ASD, a little bit of Tourette's, a little bit of OCD, a little bit of 70 حاجه بنقوم نقول بنقوم عنهم نقول له عليهم عندهم نيرو ديفلوبمنتال بروفايل شايل كميه من الحاجات لان كده تو استابلش وان دايجنوزيس في الهلوله دي بتكون عمليه صعبه جدا فحتى نحن في كورس انه يكون في حاجه اسمها ذا تشايلد ويز نيرو ديفلوبمنتال بروفايل اللي هو ما في سيمتومز واضحه فيه لكن عنده عنده نيرو ديفلوبمنتال سيمتومز من من كل الامراض دي فانا مع انه انا اي بريفير اول ذا تايم بس ال ال دي يكون عشان كده دايم بديت بال ال دي لسه الناس الحياة دي بيقدروا قادرين يعني بيحاولوا تو ستادي لكن من الاي كيو ده تضرب من 50 انت صراحه ما بتقدر تو ديفرينشيت بتقدر مور لما الاي كيو يكون عالي وتقدر تو اليسيت سيمتومز 
I hope I'll answer that. It's a good, it's a good point, yeah, Mani. Well done. So yeah, a couple of um, questions, Mark, if you would just give us a comment about them for the chat, and I'm just yeah. going to read them out. Uh, see, yeah. Dr. Tamir Beguleki, as we all know, mood disorders occur in the form of, in the form of episodes, maybe continuous in their pathogenesis. Uh, why does this distinct differentiation not exist in children? And if adults, of course. And can it be used along with family history as an indicator? Is the like idea is a mood disorder or a or a developmental disorder? Wow, that's a lot of good. Yes, but you just have to pay attention to something. Pay attention to that we have ADHD. You can diagnose it from the age of five. And yes, the child is not psychologically minded to have a mood disorder. We know that children tend to somatize their depression and anxiety at a young age. They get a tummy ache and they get a headache and they get a headache. فعشان كده احنا بنتكل على الفاميلي هيستوري. في حاجة بس أقول لك في الـ ADHD. الـ ADHD as they grow up they develop الصوت اختفى يا دكتورة ماني لو رجعت للإجابة من الأول تاني الصوت أوكي أرجع للإجابة تاني بتاعة المود ديسوردر سامعني كده؟ أيوة يا ماني طيب المود سيمتومز كويس انه نحن بنقدر تو اليسيتد لكن انتبه انه نحن لما بين اغلب الشفه بتاعنا الاي دي اتش دي زي جوت دايجنوز ات ذا ايج اوف 5 السيمتومز ما بتضربنا بدري فانت الشافع ما حيكون عنده مود سيمتومز ات ذات اي لانه هي از نوت سايكولوجيكالي مايندد وحتى في ذات في الاي ده لو في سيمتومز بتاعت مود زي تن تو سوماتايز ات بيجيك بابدومينال بين عندي وجع راس في سيمتومز ما مفهومه كويس ففي الايج ده انا بتكل على الفاميلي هيستوري بتاعت البايبولر عشان عشان تو تريس ذس. از هي جرو اب يو مايت فايند ذات لكن ده مفروض يفرقك بين حاجتين. انا ممكن يجيني ديبريشن ما عنده علاقه بالبايبولر. كو موربيد لزول عنده اي دي اتش دي، الناس الاي دي اتش دي ار فيري برون تو ديبريشن. فا از هي جرو اب لما يكتشفوا انه ما عندهم اصحاب لانه هم س... They want to make friends. The difference between the ASD and the ADHD. The little ones have no friends. In the case of the ASD, he is not interested. In fact, there are friends, not friends. He is not interested. In the case of the ADHD, he is dying to have friends, but he cannot keep them. The first time he gets them, he gets angry. He gets angry with them. He gets angry with them. So the little ones, the friendship is not enough. لكن بتاع الـ ADHD لأنه interested إنه يكون عنده يكون he's liked بيقوم بعد شوية لما يلقى إنه ما, ما في زول مصاحبه بيقوم بيديو mood symptoms أو بيديو depression and you will be amazed to know that recent research said if you've got a child with ADHD and presenting at it as a teenager with symptoms of depression the first line of treatment before starting him on antidepressant increases ADHD medication. Is that clear? Very helpful, yeah, Mani. Thank you very much. Thank you. The final comment, my Dr. Gaddal, I'm just conscious of time. So I'm going to ask this, like, you know, Mani, as you said earlier, we have to have this divided into a few um, presentations. So this is uh, just a question, my Dr. Gaddal, uh, Yasin, Salam alaikum. We have many adult patients with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, suspected also with co comorbid ADHD and ASD. It takes several months or years to get them appointments to be assessed uh, by new divergent, uh, new diversity services. A question, are there any quicker or easier to administer tests that can be done while waiting? I'm assuming in the assessment tools, they uh, mentioned the DIVA or Hagad DIVA. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, Marfi, I'm going to comment about this. Okay. I'm going to ask a question. إذا السؤال يا هو بس قول لي يس، أوكي؟ أه في إيكو ما سمحت كويس، الإيكو ال... سوري الإيكو ده، السؤال الدكتور بيسأل يقول عنده ناس بكوموربيد إذا باي بولر أو سكيزوفرينيا عندهم سيمتومز بتاعت دي و أي إس دي أز كوموربيديتي ولكن إت تيكس تايم تو دايجنوز الناس ديل، فهل في كويكست واي أوف دايجنوزينج ذم؟ إز ذات ذا كويستشن؟ تمام السؤال صحيح أيوه نعم طيب Anna, I'm going to tell you about my own practice because sometimes as 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 um, as a doctor, I believe, I'm not going to say as a consultant, you need to think outside the box. Okay? Tizakkaruk bayrana bayrata lecture bishnu, bi hierarchy of diagnoses, 
hierarchy of symptoms من psychopathology نفس الحاجه دي انا اي فيس لما انا في, ال... في انا ما عندي توج المهم في الليرنينج ديسابيلتي بوبيوليشن حق النيل لانه انا مسؤوله من مايل لتحت سوري مش مايل من مودريت ولتحت بيقوم بكون انا بعالج في الطفل عنده سيفير ليرنينج ديسابيلتي بتجي الام بتقول لي انا شاكه انه في اي اس دي هنا الطفل اوريدي في 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 ال دي سكول اتس نوت جانا اد اني ثينج والكيو مخيف فبقول لها اوكي انا هتخيل معاك انه بكره جاوا الدايجنوزيس وزر اي اي دي هي ده ولا بتضيع وقتي في حاجه زي دي لسبب واحد لانه الاي دي اتش دي ميديكيشن للشفع انا هاجيك للبوينت حقتك يا دكتور الاي دي اتش دي ميديكيشن لشافع اقل مودريت تو سيفير ال دي طلعت عنده اي دي اتش دي سيمتومز مخيفه ضربتني في وشي كده الاي دي اتش دي سيمتومز الشافع عنده ليرنينج ديسابيلتي لما تديه ستيمولنت ميديكيشن يركز التشالنجينج بيهيفير حقته هتزيد فعشان كده نحن وي دو نوت تريت اي دي اتش دي اتول في اي زول من مودريت وانت نازل لا تلون ان السيمتومز بتكون كلها جايطه لسبب لانه الستيمولنت ميديكيشن هيخليه يركز في الحاجه الغلط نرجع لسؤالك بتاع زول عنده باي بولر او سكيزوفرينيا وعنده اي دي اتش دي وات ام اي جونا جين هير I'm gaining nothing. بتاع البايبولر ما هقدر ادي ستيمولنت ميديكيشن. النون ستيمولنت ميديكيشن زي ناس الاوتوموكسيتين ممكن تو ارجيو تقول لي اديه اوتوموكسيتين. يخيل لي الماجورتي هنا او الماينورتي نكون عارفين انه الاوتوموكسيتين واز nothing but a failed antidepressant. فانا ما ممكن ادي انتي ديبريسنت كوكتيل زياده على الكوكتيل اللي ام تريتنج به والبايبولر. نمسك لو عنده سكيزوفرينيا وعنده اي اس دي. اوكي هو زول سكيزوفرينيك تو اد ليبل انا بقول للناس دي بالنسبه لي زي الشوبينج ليست. الناس بيجت احنا في عالم الناس اوبسست اوبسست بالدايجنوزيس. انا لما تو اد اي اس دي لزول عنده سكيزوفرينيا بالهيراركي اوف دايجنوزيس. ام اي جونا جين اني ثينج؟ ام جينينج نوثينج. فانا بقوم بفتح نقاش مع الفاميلي. لو الفاميلي اقتنعوا بنظريتي ولا نقول دايرين يقعدوا تو وين؟ بي ماي جيست لكن ده از نوت جونا تشينج اني بلان وبشرح لهم عديل انه حتى لو ده التشخيص از نوت جونا اد اني ثينج ايوه يا دكتور هو ايفر تريزي ات بيكمز طبعا لايك ان اكاديميك يعني اكسرسايز صراحه مش كده لانه ما في كلينيكال فاليو للدايجنوزيس في الاحوال زي دي اي جيت ذا بوينت في يد مرفوعه انا شايفها يا دكتور ياسين تفضل دكتور ياسين شكرا دكتور اماني شكرا ساره محاضره ممتازه جدا وانا عارف الباقي دقيقتين انا سؤالي بتاعي طبعا هنا سوفيستيكيتد ان انجلاند انه البيشن سكيزوفرينيا ان باي بولر هو هاز ا كومور وبد اي اس دي او دي اتش دي لما نطلعه من المستشفى بعد ما جت تريتد فور ريهابيليتيشن بيربوزز دائما الناس الريهابيليتيشن بيقولوا نحن وي كان نوت بليس ذيم لانه عنده كوموربيد اي اس دي او عنده كوموربيد اي اس دي اند هي هاز نوت بين اسيست وعشان نرسله فور اسيسمنت الويتنج ليست بيكون ست شهور الى سنه مرات سنتين عشان كده سؤالي هل اور ريزيدنت سايكولوجيست كان هاف ان ايزي تولز تو ادمينستر سو ات ماي هيلب ذا بيشنت ان placement in rehabilitation او في لو رجعنا لاهله او كده شكرا I got, I got you I got you اوكي okay. ما في assessment tool الحاجه الثانيه طبعا ال ASD عشان الناس تكون عارفه هنا انا ام توكينج اباوت تشيلدرن ال ASD بالذات محتاج panel لو ما في panel you cannot make a diagnosis لانه في ناس بتمشي برايفت لل ASD لو ما لو ما تشخص بpanel you will raise the question بتاعك انت جبت ده ليه في ناس انا معك يا دكتور ياسين انا انا مرات عندي مدخل ثاني للعائله بحب دائما النقاش الصريح في ناس بتسك الدايجنوزيس دي عشان البنفيت لانه انت كل ما السايكو بصلك سوري الامراضك زادت قروشك زادت لو بخص البنفيت بقوم بحين يعني لكن دائما الناس دي اصلا بتكون في البنفيت بتاعتها عاليه ف فلكن صراحه صراحه مع سيريس منتل إلنس ويخش لي في كيو تاني دي ديفيكلت قصه الاي اس دي دي الاي اس دي دي انا مثلا مرات 
في في بالذات في في التايم بتاع السايكولوجي ما بضيع الناس ما عندهم سيري اوف مايند ما بضيع وقتي بحول كيس حتى لو هاي فانكشن اي اس دي لسايكولوجي صراحه لانه زي ويست السايكولوجي تايم لكن احتمال السيتنجز دي ات ويل بي ا كول انه يكون في سبيشالايز سيتنج بتاعت ريهاب تو فيت الاي اس دي ديل الاي اس دي بيشنتس احتمال ذيس از وات وي كول ان ان ماكنيت لكن اذا ما في حاجه لمثلا ريهاب او هنا انا انا اونستلي انا اونستلي بفتكر انه يعني زي ما بيقولوا زي ما بيقولوا از اكاديميك اكسرسايز بشرح للعائله وبعد ذلك اب تو ذيم لكن اذا في اذر ثينج ميبي الاسسمنت فايدته هنا احنا مرات بنعمل حاجات عشان نثبت انه في في زي قصه التورت سندروم التورت سندروم ديل حسا ما عندهم سيرفيس بالمناسبه الادلت عندهم سيرفيس اظن في واحده في بيرمنغهام باقي الكانتري ما في شيء فنحن بنقوم نجيب الكيسز ونعدها عشان نقول تو بريزنت للجفرمنت نقول في ان ميت هنا فاحتمال بس دي الحاجه انك تقوم تطلع الكيسز زي دي وتقوم تو هايلايت تقول في ان ميت ابارت فروم ذات صراحه انا ما آه ما ما شايفه بالي لكن ات مايت بي سمثينج يو نيد تو ريز ويز 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 المانجرز ثانك يو يا ماني بوينت ويل ميد وي ار ات ذا اند اوف اور تايم طبعا لكن يا ماني نحن هذا زي ما بقولوا منك كوميتمنت انك حتدينا اكبل مور يعني واحده حتكون اي دي اتش دي وواحده اي اس دي كان اي بس كونفيرم معاكي التايم ار يو اوكي تو دو نيكست ساتردي سيم تايم اوكي ليت اس ساي انه انا ممكن اعملها نيكست ساتردي لكن معلش يا جماعه لو حصلت لي ظروف احفوا لي العفو والعافيه لكن لو ما حصلت لي ظروف ام مور ذان هابي اخلص ال 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 اي دي اتش دي واخلص ال اي اس دي واديكم حاجه بسيطه عن ال الفيت الالكحول سندروم اتس نوت ا نيورو ديفلوبمنتال ديسوردر في ديبات رهيب عليه ما واقع تحت الجروب بتاع ال 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 دي اس ام 5 لكن التوكس انه ال 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 البوكس الجايه الدايكنوستيك بوكس الجايه الفيت الالكحول سندروم في ديبيتس بين البروفيسورز انا بس عشان في الرويال كوليج بس عارف المعلومه دي ف فواحده من الحاجات اللي يونيت تو بي اوير اوف لانه في اوفرلاب بينه وبين الاي دي اتش دي قبل ما اقول انا انتهيت uh, يا دكتور عماد انت معانا انت في مدني الو uh, ايوه uh, اهلا اماني اهلا اهلا لا انا ما في مدني انا كنت يعني واز جوكينج لما تلا ياسر انا في مدني انا هنا أنا... موجود <تصفيق> اوكي انا عارفه موجود في بريطانيا حصل لي كده انا بس مزنوقه لي سايكاتريست في مدني او بي جريتفول اف السايكاتريست اي زول في مدني بس يتواصل مع دكتور سار ربليل ويديني مرته عشان اتواصل معه ذات سول اوكي خلاص آه انا زي سيد ام مور ذان هابي تو كاري اون ذيس از لونج از انكم انتو هابي ذات سول الف الف شكر الف شكر ماني فيري هابي وفيري انفورماتيف يعني اي ليرنت لوت انا بيرسونالي اباوت توريت ام شور الترينيز هنا برضه زي فاند تريلي هيلبفول اند فاليبل صراحه ات داز نوت جيت انف سبيس تو اتنشن توريت سيندروم يعني يوجوالي نحن وي جاست جامب اميديتلي في نيورو ديفلوبمنتال ديسوردرز لقصه الاي دي اتش دي والاي اس دي سو ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ريلي هيلبفول ليكشر افتكر لحد هنا كده ونختم وخلاص نيكست ساتردي يا جماعه سيم تايم وياسر انت حتنزل لنا فلاير باذن الله فور 8 بي ام Uh, Khartoum time, and he will be able to talk to you about the new developmental disorder. Thank you very much. <laughs>